I swear we picked the absolute best time to get back into Boruto because the manga is flames right now. If you guys remember last, Kawaki just went the Mangekyo route and killed Boruto right in front of Shikamaru and Naruto. Naruto's been on some heavy, like, Jesus swag ever since he became Okage, so he kind of just forgives Kawaki for killing his son right in front of him, since it was really Momoshiki and Kawaki is basically a part of his family now too. The devotion this kid has for Naruto is still kind of questionable to me, but even after drilling this big hole through Boruto's chest, he got revived, and this is where we gotta adjust the glasses and pull out the calculator. <clears throat> So Boruto's extraction of the Otsutsuki data was about 85% completed as Momoshiki confirmed. However, due to the trauma and severe internal damage from Kawaki's attack, Momoshiki had to use the remaining 15% of the data to instead restore all of Boruto's destroyed cells and tissues or his own soul would be extinguished through this death as well. Oh was able to get away due to all of this chaos, but that remaining 15% of that data that Momoshiki had to use would in turn speed up the transformation process, thus making Boruto 100% Otsutsuki upon revival. I'm gonna tell you guys this right now, this chapter really changed up the pacing of this arc and things are moving fast as chapter 80, 68 begins with Sai, Amato, and the others questioning Boruto about how he survived. Wait, you're saying you were resurrected using karma, Amato and Kataski say in unison? Boruto confirms that those were Momoshiki's own words and he can't really blame them if they don't believe it because it does sound crazy. As Boruto looks down at his hand though, he notices something. Something odd. Something that shakes him to his core immediately. When Boruto looks up finally, he realizes that even though it's free, you haven't hit the like button yet somehow. Amato confirms it as well and also says that the problem still persists of Momoshiki taking over Boruto's consciousness from time to time and how they still really don't have a solution for that. Kitasuke mentions the pills Boruto's been taking have been having some good effects, but Boruto tells him nah. I don't need those anymore. Basically, he explains that not only does he feel a fundamental difference from before, but now he even has confidence he can directly channel Momoshiki's power. Over in the other room, Naruto and Shikamaru are monitoring Kawaki as Sumeri confirms that while he's not in critical condition, he used up so much chakra that it's knocked him out cold. Thanks to the nano machines in his blood, however, he's almost fully healed. She says that it'd be best to check him out in depth at the lab, but then pivots, wondering why they asked her to check him out and not a motto. Of course, everyone that was involved with the battle with Code is still pretty suspicious of a motto at this point, seeing Kawaki's karma resurface. Shikamaru tells her that they needed to confirm a few things concerning a motto first, and until then, he isn't allowed near Kawaki. Ibiki doesn't seem to think it's the best idea to leave him unbound, but Shikamaru brings up a great point. Right now, they don't really have anything that would be able to restrain Kawaki. Because he possesses Ishiki's techniques, he can shrink himself to microscopic size with his dojutsu, and his karma lets him absorb any ceiling juice they could try. As far as they know, however, he just wants to keep Naruto safe, so as long as that's the case and they don't ruffle his feathers too much, he should be on their side. All we can really do is have faith, he goes on. Trust him and make sure he stays on our side if that's the peaceful solution we're sticking with. Naruto agrees, saying that this is how Konoha operates. Shikamaru asks him if he's really honestly okay with all of this. Naruto simply tells him yeah. They'll have a nice long talk when he wakes up regardless though. As Shikamaru leaves the room, Sumeri follows, asking did something happen with Lord Seven? Shikamaru plays dumb, the rest of the village still not knowing the details of what happened on that battlefield. This is when Sasuke finally reappears though, mentioning that he has some intel and it seems he's found Code's hideout. He explains to Shikamaru that they found one of Boro's facilities that's detailed as a structure hidden on the edge of the land of snow in an area already considered taboo even by the locals. It's apparently a secret facility that only a few of the cult's top brass even know about. It seems it's here that they engaged in some inhumane rituals and unbeknown experiments for scientific ninja tool R&D. There's no definitive answer on if Code is there or not, but there does seem to be an acquaintance of Code's there, a man named Bug. Shikamaru says that they'll deploy a squad immediately since they don't have too many leads, but this is when Sasuke asks if what he heard is true about Kawaki. Shikamaru confirms that, yeah, 
He killed Boruto and he did it right in front of him and Naruto. Thankfully, Boruto turned out to be okay, but even if it was just to stop Momoshiki, that was pretty intense. The only other ones who know about it are Ino, Sai, Amato, and Kataski. We're still deciding how to move forward. Where's Boruto, Sasuke asks. Shikamaru mentions that he should be with his friends, Sarata and the rest, and he should go see them. When we reach the hideout in question, we see Ida recollecting the events that took place. Be thankful, Code, she says. Your precious Tintel sacrifice, Boruto, is still alive. He was revived using Momoshiki's karma. This stands as a shock to Code and Damon, who's hanging on his back right now for whatever reason. Moreover, Ida continues, it seems the rest of the compressed data was extracted, meaning that Boruto is fully Otsutsuki now. This really gets Ko's attention as she says that somehow Boruto and Momoshiki had an exchange that even she couldn't see directly with her Senrigan clairvoyance. I wonder if he's able to communicate with Momoshiki on some sort of spiritual plane now. You're lucky that Boruto is alive, but honestly, I'm fed up with the multiple grandstanding acts you displayed. You took it too far, she says, cutting her eyes at him, especially using my little brother without my permission. Toad pauses for a second, telling her that he really didn't have any other options. Listen, your job is to bring Kawaki to me, she tells him sternly, and in return, I'll help you regain your power to aid your own goals, since you're useless to me the way you are right now. However, if I determine that even after you gain your strength, you're still useless, incompetent, or simply just a hindrance. We siblings have absolutely no qualms about disposing of you. Consider yourself warned. Damon then glares at Code as well, as Code asks, You mean we're not even comrades? How sad. That's business for you, Ida responds. If you don't produce results, you'll lose even this sad relationship. Didn't I mention that I already took measures, Code says, as he puts his hand to his ear, listening to something or someone. All that's left, he says, as we then see Shikamaru back in Konoha, a claw mark on the back of his neck. It's the timing, Code says, waiting for Shikamaru to be right where he wants him. As Shikamaru exits the elevator, he enters Amado's office, asking what the news is on Boruto. It sounded far-fetched at first, Amato says, but proof is in the pudding. The blood analysis aligns with his explanation. And Momoshiki? Can we definitely say that he can't resurrect anymore, Shikamaru asks. Yeah, it's 100% impossible, Amato confirms, but as he says this, Shikamaru grabs him by the back of his collar. He demands Amato to explain what the heck is going on with Kawaki and this karma situation. He slams Amato against the wall, telling him to explain why he implanted that thing back in Kawaki without anyone's consent. Amato explains that although Kawaki loathes that karma more than anything, his desire for power was even greater. He wanted enough power to protect Lord Okage. In order for the karma to remanifest, his intent was absolutely essential. In short, Kawaki himself chose this path. This is the result he wished for. What if he didn't have it when you needed it? That's why I implanted it ahead of time. Wasn't the reason why you were able to survive this last crisis because you had Kawaki's karma? Shikamaru's getting really irritated now, telling him to stop dodging the question because what he did wasn't for the benefit of Konoha or Kawaki. All of a sudden, in the midst of their heated conversation, Code flies out of the claw mark on the back of Shikamaru's neck, bursting into the room. Sorry to interrupt, but I didn't want to waste this prime opportunity, Code says, to the shock of a model and kinda Ida now. Shikamaru was sent flying across the room by Code, slamming into a wall as Code makes no attempts to be stealthy anymore. Code then grabs a model by the neck, telling him to rescind the limiters on his power immediately. A model is still shocked he showed up in the middle of the village like this under the Hokage's nose, saying he'll be sensed right away like this. Code, however, reminds him that that isn't a problem because all a model has to do to release the limiters is look into his eyes and say the simple command. A model is stunned at how Code was able to somehow figure even this out as the sensory unit begins to pick up on another chakra in a model's office. Eno communicates with Shikamaru, who confirms that Code is right there in front of him, but he tells her to hold off on sending any units for backup. 
He tells her to just simply inform Naruto and the others, but not to send anyone there yet. He only showed up because it was just us here. I don't want to provoke him into running off. Let me handle this, he tells her. Ino hesitates, but Shikamaru insists that they just continue monitoring them from afar and wait for the signal. Shikamaru tries to restrain Code with his shadow possession jutsu, but this does little in the grand scheme. It's useless. I can still move my fingers enough to slit his throat, Code tells him, warning Amato that he knows how he is, so he should hurry up. This is when Shikamaru reveals that, of course he noticed the claw mark on the back of his neck and Code really thought that he would fall for such a transparent trap. Code looks stunned as we see Amato turning his attention to something else as well, as a chamber opens up next to them now. Wake up Bronco, Shikamaru says, as the container opens and something flies out of it. In the air above them, Delta hovers over Code and Amato, giving Code an icy glare surprising even him at this point. She's a new model, reprogrammed to be a battle asset that protects Konoha, Shikamaru says. He tells Delta her target is now Code and he's the enemy of Konoha now. I know, I know, shut up, she says, and she uses her power to separate Code from Amato, pinning him against the other side of the room. I guess that if I approached Amato with few to no guards, you might show up, Code, Shikamaru says. It'd be too good of an opportunity for an idiot like you to pass up. Code, however, is already making his move as Shikamaru notices that he's placed claw marks on the wall beside him. I'm not letting you escape, Shikamaru says, but something strange happens next. Someone on the other side of the claw marks grabs Code's hand as the others stand there frozen. Escape, Code asks. Quite the contrary, actually. Through the claw marks, a delicate figure steps out, one heel at a time as her hair flows behind her. As Ida arrives in Konoha, the entire room freezes as Amato himself looks as if he's seen a ghost. <laughs>